Today is another Sunday that the Lord has given us and we will be glad. I am glad and I hope that you are glad as well and rejoice in it. Um, I'm grateful to our bishop and our mom, Pastor Millicent and Pastor Beatrice and the rest of the organizing team for this week uh, for the opportunity to share the word of God with us today. My name is Valentine Miriti. I am born again. I love the Lord. Um, in here, I am not alone. I'm with my cousin. I don't know if she was able to make it. She could maybe raise her hand. There she is, Lucy. Um, Lucy is my cousin. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you for it. I'm also grateful for God's love and grace that he has bestowed upon me today. I'm a daughter, or I'm a son in the kingdom, and I'm a daughter of impact. Yeah, and that's just about my introduction. Um, our topic for the day will be waiting on God. Um, waiting on God is the topic for the day. Um, our theme of the year is mounting up. And it is from this theme that I believe by the grace of God that I'll be getting our preschool today. Um, and I'm sure, I believe, that the Lord will bless us all. Isaiah, Isaiah 40, um, verse 31. Isaiah 40, 31. It says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. So Prophet Isaiah is one of the greatest prophets um, that we had in Bible history. And um, he ministered to Israel while it was going through decay from the inside and inversion from the outside. He um, and Israel itself had sinned against God and hence they were left to the Babylonians in version. And Isaiah saw this coming. He knew that it was about to happen. And he knew that the, Babil the, the Babylonians sorry, would destroy, um, would take captive, and also ruin Jerusalem. In the midst of all this, he had a word of encouragement. In the midst of the discouragement and the confusion, in the midst of the suffering, he had a word of encouragement from them. He had received it from God, a word of hope, a message of encouragement from God to the people who were suffering. Suffering like we are today. You know, most of us have lost our jobs. Most of us right now, that you have lost your jobs, I can attest for us um, young people, I know. Now that we've lost our jobs, some of us don't even know what to do. Um, due to COVID-19, maybe, um, some of our families are not well. Our children's behavior is, misle is you know, um, alarming to us. Maybe our families are crumbling down and we don't even know if all shall be well. And as I speak to you today, I'm also speaking to myself because we don't really know if all is going to be well. We don't know when, we don't even know. We are not even sure of anything at all. But in the midst of all this, God has a message for us today that us who wait upon him, us who wait patiently upon him, he shall renew our strength. To the people who are quitting today, I came to tell you today that do not quit. Continue waiting upon the Lord. Be faithful to him and he shall renew your strength. Job 14, 7. Sorry. Job 14. Job. Um, if we do not have it, I will just. Oh, it's a... Yes, it says, for, the, for there is hope for a tree, if it's cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease, or rather, its new shoots will not fail. I came to tell us today that in our situations, the ones that we are in today, they are very much temporal. And I like what Bishop tells us um, on Sundays. He repeats this oftenly. And he says it's either we are in a storm, or we are getting out of it, or we are getting into one. So life is a cycle. And in this difficult time when we feel like giving up, let's remember that the promise from our Father 
is there's a promise from our father and all we have to do is to wait on him so four things that god has promised us as we also wait on him number one is to renew our strength number one is to renew our strength to renew means to exchange to renew means to get the old and give the new or to have the new or replace it with a new thing it is the fainted strength the lost hope um, the broken hearts God is making it new for us. The heavy burdens, God is lifting them up for us. He has promised us to renew our strengths. Number two is we shall fly up like eagles. We shall fly up like eagles. The promise here is strength to soar above. It is strength to soar above everything else. And looking at issues from a godly perspective is easier for each and every one of us to handle. Um, Isaiah 15, 19 says, When the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So as we wait upon the Lord, he will enable us to fly, or rather to soar higher above every situation that we are handling. Um, number three is to run and not be weary to run and not be weary. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I love what uh, verse 1 says. God tells us to run the race, which means he's not... He's not leaving us to run the race alone. He is holding our hands as we run this race with him. And he's like inviting us because he's telling us, let us run. Let's run this race together. And for sure, as we run with him, we will not be weary. We will not grow faint or be tired. He shall continue to renew our strength because strength is his promise. Number four is to walk and not faint. To walk and not faint. Colossians 2 6 says, as you therefore have received Christ in Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. It is a verse that encourages us to walk in Christ or rather to um, walk the walk or walk the talk. Um, and doing the same thing can be compared to walking. It could be, you know, you wake up every day to pray about that issue that you're praying about, or rather about your situation, and you, you are founded in his presence, communing with him every single morning, trusting and believing. It's not that everything is okay, but the fact that you are going there day by day, every morning, every time that you had set to go back again to him, that is walking. It could be that colleague that you have in your office that gets to your nerves when you get into that office they don't even give you peace but the fact that you are peaceful you have the you are walking in peace and you speak to them in peace that is walking it could be that umetoka unaenda job then unapanda gari unapatia conductor pesa zako and inafika uko karibu ku alight and then you tell them tafadhali change and they come talking to you rudely they are so rude at you thinking that you're stealing from them but the fact that you are silent not usiwajibu, the fact that you don't give them an answer out of anger, that is now walking. And it is hard. It pushes you. Sometimes you're pushed to the wall. But the fact that you stand firm, because when you are walking, God has promised us, it is walking not alone, it is walking with him. The fact that you are standing firm on his ground, you will not faint. He says that if you walk with me, you will not faint. Um, and even as we wait on God, because the four things that the promises that he has given unto us, these promises don't come in just like that. They come into a person who's found in his presence. Um, a while ago we were discussing, as we always discuss um, YBS every Monday to create content, and a friend of mine was telling us of how life had been because we sit down and ask each other, how is life? How are you doing? So she was telling us um, 
how hard it has been, especially last year during uh, when we were in the lockdown season and how, you know, salaries um, were slashed off and cut off for her. And at that time, because she was dwelling in his presence day in and day out, she had peace. She never knew where rent would come from. She never knew where food would come from. She never knew her tomorrow. But because God is with her, she knew that God was with her. And she would be at the presence of God every single day. She would obey the word of God every single day. She would do it right, just like God had guided her every single day. Then she had peace. Because she didn't, she didn't, we don't even know our tomorrow, do we now? We don't. But because we are found with him, because we have a relationship with him, then he gives us peace. He gives us the strength to soar above every situation that we are handling today. And three things that I'd love to share with us today, even as we wait on God, is number one, to pray. Number one is prayer. Prayer, it is communicating with God. It is talking to him as he, and also he, it is him speaking to you. And Philippians 4, 7 tells us rightfully that we should not be anxious about anything, but in thanksgiving, in supplication and thanksgiving, let's make our request known to him. It is through prayer that we make our request known to God. It is through prayer that we surrender ourselves to him. And you know, we have a friend that you don't have to uh, make an appointment to call because he's given you a leeway and a room through prayer that you can communicate to him every single day. Let us take this opportunity and continue to pray and continue to trust God for what we are trusting him for because he does not fail. Number two is worship. Worship is acknowledging God's worth and sovereignty and his ability. It is the response for both us personally and corporately as a church to God for who he is and what he has done in our lives. It is expressed in and by the things that we do, the things that we say, and the things that we think. It is giving, it means giving ourselves to his lordship or to his ruleship. Number three is praise. Praise, to praise is to honor God or to worship him. And when we praise him, we place a great value on God and on his acts or his deeds. Um, let's read First Chronicles 16, verse 23 to 31. Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He, he is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Give to the Lord, sorry, the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O worship the Lord in the beauty of his of holiness. Tremble before him, all earth. The world is so firmly established, it is not, it shall not be moved. Let, us, let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let us praise God. Let us obey his word. He is guiding us. Let's walk by his guidance day by day. And even as I conclude, I'd love to share with us a story um, of my life. Um, so last year, we lost our grandfather last year, and it was hard, very hard for us, uh, because we, we loved him. And we had plans. <laughs> so one morning, we, write, we wake up and we are told he's collapsed and he's going to be with the Lord. Um, we could not believe it at that time. But the moment and the minute that we took to sit down 
and thank God for his life, immediately he gave us peace. Immediately he comforted us. Immediately we would feel he was there with us, even in the midst of the pain, in the midst of asking how, in the midst of the so many questions that we were running in our minds during that time, he gave us peace and he gave us comfort. And he's the reason as to why we are still standing together as a family today. That is just one of the things that um, we've gone through as a family. There are many more things that he has done for us as a family. So my encouragement to us today is that there are promises that God has given us to sow up like eagles, to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint. These things are found in a relationship with God. It is in that relationship that you have, that you start up every single day, that you will soar like an eagle, you will run and not be weary, and you will walk and not faint. Uh, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your word that you have shared with us today, dear God. We thank you for the encouragement that you've given unto us, dear God. We ask that you may enable us to continue being in a relationship with you, to continue obeying your word, to continue to pray Jehovah dear God because you have promised us that it is in this time that we will soar like eagles. It is in this time even as we are going through our situations, Jehovah, dear God, we will run our race and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint, Jehovah, dear King of all the glory. Receive all the glory and all the honor, Jehovah, dear God. We bless your holy name, my Redeemer and my Father. I declare that our week is blessed, dear God. I declare that your favor is upon us, Jehovah, my Redeemer and my Father. And I declare your head of protection upon each and every one of us, Jehovah, dear God. It is with well, it is well with us it is well with our souls in jesus mighty name be blessed